All right, I think we're ready to start our next talk. Uh, this is Starsky Wong, and he's from Facebook, and he's going to talk about their network and how they manage uh, both OCP and non-OCP hardware. Hi. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Starsky from Facebook. Today, I'm going to talk about how we manage our network with a mixture of OCP and non and vendor switch. Over the years, uh, Facebook, that's fine, don't worry. I try to increase my voice, OK? <laughs> Over the years, uh, Facebook uh, built a network infrastructure, which our device are come from multiple vendors. And in the last few years, we introduced the OCP switch, the FBOS. And in this talk, I'm going to talk about how we do network management in Facebook and how we extend our network management system to adopt with the OCP switch. <coughs> okay, thanks. Um, this is the overview of my talk. First, I will talk about what our Facebook networks look like and how we do network management and some challenge what, when we do network management. Then we will, uh, I will introduce a network management system we call Robotron in Facebook, which we use to manage all our Facebook networking device. After that, I will show you how we extend Robotron in order to accept the OCP switch. And finally, I will share some experience and lesson we learned over the years. Thank you. It seems working. <laughs> okay. So um, Facebook family product, uh, actually there are millions of and two billions of users using Facebook family product uh, monthly across the world. In order to support such large user demand, Facebook, we need to build and maintain our own network infrastructure, which include the data center, the pop site, and the backbone. When we talk about network management at Facebook, we have two goals. First, we need to make sure that our network is running healthy. And second, the network management system needs to be flexible enough in order to support our fast evolving network architecture, which is usually driven by user and application increasing demand. Here are some example tasks we need to do every day. We may turn up our device, we may turn up some circuit, migrate the circuit, and rename the router, of course, plus all the config generation and monitoring. Note that our network engineer actually put a lot of effort to make sure that all these operations are conducted correctly. For example, in this picture, it takes at least four engineers to make sure that each cable is plugged into a correct port. It's supposed to be a joke. So <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Actually, this picture is taken when we send our network engineer to our data center to make sure that they understand every detail step when we try to turn up anything in the data center such that we can develop a better network management software. Because if these operations are conducted incorrectly, our user will be unhappy, and sometimes the law enforcement may also notice. <laughs> now, there's a joke. <laughs> so when we do network management in Facebook, there are a few challenges. The first one is the multi-vendor environment. Okay. Um, this is an illustrative example when we do uh, for the multi-vendor environment in our data center. When we first begin to design our network architecture, the design is relatively simple. And then at each layer, we try to get the network device from a single vendor. At that point, actually, man network management is relatively simple. And later, we introduce our OCP switch. Things become a little bit more complex. And when we talk about our network topology right now we are having in the fabric, things are pretty complex. We have six pack, backpack, web 100, web for, wedge 40, and plus their vendor device. Our network management system need to ensure that all these devices can be in the world, operate correctly into each other. 
The other challenge we are having when we do network management is the coexist of different network architecture. This graph shows that at a given point of time, how many different kinds of network architecture exist in our data center. As you can see, at some point in our data center, actually we are hosting eight different kinds of network architecture. So our network management system also needs to take, consider this one and make sure that all these architecture can be provisioned and maintained correctly. And of course, there are a few other challenges, like when we distribute the config, we want to make sure that the config distribution actually is atomic. And also, when we distribute some kind of config, like the IPGP mesh, these configs are, in, are dependent on each other. We want to make sure that the config are generated correctly. But for the interest of time, I'm not going to go to the detail here. This is an overview of our Facebook network. When the user request first come, you will go to our pop site. If the POC can answer the request, it will return the answer directly. Otherwise, the request will route to our, the request will route to our data center for a backbone and then return the, uh, the answer to the user. The common network operation task we need to do across different space is we may build or become a cluster, we may upgrade the capacity of a cluster, and we need to upgrade or migrate some circuit. In order to smooth and all these network operation, we build a network management system we call Robotron. The foundation of the Robotron is a vendor agnostic store, which we call FBNet. On top of FBNet, the network engineer can very easy to specify network design and then generate vendor specific config, followed by deployment and monitoring. More detail of the Robotron system we have published in our ACM second paper. So if you are interested, I will invite you to take a look. And for the interest for this talk, now let's see how we model our network in FBNet, which is the vendor agnostic store. This is an illustrative example for our Freiburg port. In this example, we have uh, four Freiburg switch, which is the FSW. On top, of the upstream to the FSW is the spine switch, which is the SSW. The southbound of this port is to the top of the rack or the server, and the northbound is to our backbone. Now, let's zoom in to this particular circuit between the FSW and the SSW. Between the FSW and the SSW, there are two physical interfaces. On the, SF, on the FSW side, these two interfaces belong to one line card, and on the other side, it belongs to two different line cards. We bundle these two interfaces into an aggregated one. On top of it, we assign a prefix and a PGP session. Now, let's see how we model the left-hand side of this circuit. In order to model that in the vendor agnostic store, we need to generate corresponding object, starting from the network switch, line card, two physical interfaces, one aggregator one, prefix, PGP session, and circuit. In, inside each object, we have some field to specify the property of the object. Uh, <laughs> some technical issue. <laughs> Just okay. okay. Like the name of the interface and the speed of the circuit. And of course, we have some field to define the relationship between different objects. For example, we bundle two physical interfaces into an aggregated one. And this is the complete picture for the half of the circuit. Imagine that this is only half of the circuit, and we are doing, the, doing this for the whole Facebook network. So actually, this is pretty complicated. And of course, we need software to help. For users to try to read write the data we store in FBNet, we provide RPC service. For read, usually user are interest for the per object, op, per object operation, so we provide fine grained query. And for the write, like the example I showed before, when we create a circuit, we need to create multiple objects and relationship. So we try to implement the write survey is uh, task oriented. And in order to provide HA, we provide multiple instance of read write service across our data center. When users try to write something to our FBNet, you will go through our write RPC 
and the data will write to the primary database. And the data are continuously synchronized with the secondary database. And every read will grow through our secondary database. This is how we handle the read writes at Facebook scale. Now let's see how our network engineer can, design, uh, can specify the network design in the, you know, not, uh, when the agnostic store. When our network engineer tries to specify a topology, usually it just will go through a template. And in the template, the engineer just needs to specify what kind of device they need, what are the corresponding hardware, and the number of devices it needed. And of course, there are some link characteristics, like how many physical interfaces needed, and we need a V6 prefix and the speed of the circuit. Once the template is loaded, our tools will validate, and if the validation is correct, it will generate the corresponding object in the FPNet. And in this case, actually we are generating about 100 objects and more than 100 relationships. And once these objects are stored in FPNet, the next step is to generate the uh, device config. To generate device config, we will apply a config schema, which specifies what kind of attribute is needed in, from the object in order to generate. In this example, we know that we need some device information, aggregated interface information, and the physical interface information. Note that up to this point, all the template and the object is rendered agnostic. And once we get the per device config object, we apply those data to a vendor specific config. Uh, combine the data with the template, we can generate con vendor specific config. This is one example how we generate the interface session for the vendor specific config. In this example, we will apply those objects through looping, uh, branching, and variable name replacement. By doing all this, we can generate the config. Now let's see how we extend our network management system to support the OCP switch. When we introduce AirPods into our production network, the first question we ask ourselves is, do we need to manage them differently? The answer is yes, but that only happens at the lower layer. Introduce AirPods to our network actually is very similar to introduce any piece of new hardware into our software. We all know that when we introduce a new vendor, there will be deviation on the control API, monitoring API. The key here to address this problem is to do abstraction. As far as we can do the vendor agnostic concept and abstract that to our model, we can always implement a lower level hook in order to do vendor specific API. So in order to support AppBoss, we make some changes on our network management pipeline. We have some new model to capture Galaxy, and we have some new template to generate AppBoss specific config. After that, we are lucky. We can leverage a Facebook infrastructure tool called Configurator to distribute the config to all our AppBoss devices. And later, we need, to, uh, we need to add our new collector. Now let's see how we update our model to support Backpack. Traditionally, when we deal with the vendor switch, we put all the switch specific information into a class called network switch, like uh, zero number, IP, chassis model. But in, in Galaxy, uh, in Backpack, that is very different because we know that in Backpack actually is multiple individual agents running in the chassis and they are distributed, distributed cooperate with each other. There's no centralized control. In order to capture that, we introduce a new class called network subswitch. We put the per agent, which is per agent information into the network subswitch class, and the network switch becomes the virtual parent of all the subswitch. By doing this, we can capture the, all the, we can capture our backpack in our network management. This is a, another example of how we extend our monitoring system in order to support AppBoss. When we try to uh, monitor our vendor device, usually we will go through some collector like CLI, SNMP, and NetConf our PC. And after we collect the vendor specific information, we will send those data to a normalization service. After data is normalized, the data will become vendor agnostic. 
And once we have the vendor agnostic data, we will send to the downstream system, like the visualization, storage, and alert system. We know that airports only communicate through thrift protocol. So to support that, we add a thrift collector, which collect airport specific information. Once we collect those information, again, we send to the normalization service. And once it is normalized, in our case, actually, we don't have any code change in our downstream system. During we are building the, our, soft, our network management software, we learned a lot. And in here, I'll try to share some experience we, we learned. The first experience we have is network engineer actually take time to adapt any new model. When we try to introduce airports into our network, we think at that point, we think that uh, we will only uh, communicate through thrift protocol. In my opinion, I'm a software engineer. Thrift is good because it can communicate with different programming language, easy to serialize, structured language. But we noticed that ad network engineer actually take time to contest switch when they, when they try to troubleshoot. In the, in the case that there are vendors switch and f -boss. Of course, then productivity decreases. So to address that, we try to write a CLI wrapper in order to wrap over the thrift protocol. The lesson we learned here is we learned that CLI actually is kind of important. But we also know that CLI can be pretty fragile, right? Because <laughs> at different vendors, you will trigger different command to get the same piece of information, and you get arbitrary, arbitrary result back. So maybe it's time for us to also consider some kind of open model for CLI. The second experience we learned is we noticed that some of the network operations actually need to be tight, tightly coupled. There's one example that our engineer update the data in FBNet, but he forgot to generate the config. As a result, he just pushing a stale config. And of course, the switch is never turned on because the config is wrong. The lesson we learned here actually is um, network design, config generation, and deployment, these operations actually should be tightly coupled. Actually, the open source disaggregated switch helped a little bit here because we have, this, we have the choice of the software we are, we are using. And in fact, in our data center, we already coupled some of the operations together. But still, we are, we are working in an environment that we have both open source and vendor switch. Then we still need to address the challenge state Let's say if we want to couple this operation, how can we ensure that this operation is um, conducted automatically? And also, if there's some conflict is detected, how can we address that? The last experience I want to share here is emergency fallback and audit actually is kind of important. Our Robotron system actually can handle most of our network operation we need to do every day. But still, we observe that there are some instance our engineer bypass our system, manual SSH, and change some config. And usually those are emergency case. It doesn't happen too much in our OCP switch because basically we just take off the SSH to the control plane. <laughs> but still, we acknowledge that and we, we understand that that is needed. So later, instead, to just block it, we actually allow them but we try to actively monitor our config, and if there are config deviation, we will try to file an alert, then someone will take a look of the alert. So the lesson we learned here is, it seems kind of difficult to just completely block the, mechan by block the bypass mechanism, but some open challenge we are still solving in Facebook is, if we know that it's difficult to block, then can we develop some network management system which can even handle the emergency case, which is, and such that we can reduce such kind of bypass happen over time. And once the emergency case is over, can we safely revert those activities? So in this talk, we share some experience for how we manage OCP and non-OCP switch in our Facebook network. I would say OP, o, people who can, uh, the highlight here is OCP switch is different, but same as any other when you try to introduce a new vendor into a network. The key to address this problem is we need to do the abstraction and normalization correctly. As far as we do it correct, the update of, the, of, your, of our network management system is minimum. 
We also share some challenge we are still solving in Facebook. And hopefully after this talk, we can raise some discussion and as a team, we can address this problem together. And thank you. This is the end of the talk. So feel free to ask me questions. We have time for a few questions. Hi. So there are very obvious answers to most of your questions, problems, data models. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Why don't we see your face in open config? Why are you, why are you still working with CLIs? Sorry? Can, can why are you still using CLI? Why are you, why are you generating configs rather than using machine interfaces? It yeah. just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, good question. Because actually, when we, during the troubleshooting, some of the information for some vendor can only obtain from CLI. So there's a no well after model which we can get all the information for any piece of hardware. So if we cannot have 100% coverage, when you do troubleshooting with, if, with a mixture of device, you still need to do contest switching. So that's why we still kind of mimic some of the CLI we do, then our engineer was easier to adapt the workflow. No, we don't. In in normal case, in normal case, but when you do the trouble, when you do, when you talk about troubleshooting case, then it's different because usually the troubleshooting case is the corner case we don't see day to day, right? So in that case, network engineer will try to go through different direction, get all as much as of information they want. So that's why they use the CLI. One more question. I'm sure you're going to ask how many switches and what brands. That I'm not going to answer. <laughs> so this is a very interesting time to, to actually continue with the question that's just been asked because this is something that bothers me a great deal as someone who's concerned about infrastructure security and infrastructure resilience. Using the CLI was the problem that Amazon just had. Mm -hmm. An administrator error caused 20% of the internet to go out because mm -hmm. of S3. So do you have any thoughts beyond what you're able to present today, do you see that as a problem? Do you see that as something that, that, that you as a company need to address as a vulnerability as you scale? I see. So of course, I cannot speak of, for the Facebook, but as a software engineer who managing the network, I would say that um, if we can come up with some kind of data model which can capture any information, we need to get on all the vendors. Of course, then we can completely block that access. But we know that is very difficult, right? There will be some interesting content on one vendor, which just will, people need to use to troubleshooting or debugging, like the queue link or whatever priority cards, particular, particular content for the queue. We cannot get that in a common data model. So that's why we are facing that. This is what Open Config is doing. Hmm? This is what Open Config is doing, common data model. Yes, we we, are, we love to we would love to use that actually, but network device come from my post, post, uh, from my experience. I'm dealing with like every day or every week there are new piece of network device, nine card transceiver coming to a network, and when we try to introduce that test that we say oh we are missing this kind of or those kind of thing right. So we, but we still want to keep our network rolling. So that's why we don't completely block it. We would, actually, we don't encourage our user to use it, but instead, uh, we will try to monitor such usage to see whether we can do better. Thank you, Sarsky. Thank you. Well